me, Cassandra Martinez. Welcome to Sideshow Con. Today we are joined by artist Dave Wilkins, who's worked with us at Sideshow, as well as DC, Dark Horse Comics, and Marvel. Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure getting to talk to you. Um, let's first start talking about what mediums you've worked on and what mediums you are hoping to work on. Like most guys, I started traditionally, so like pen and ink, pencil, um, and then for speed, you know, you, you tend to scan that stuff or, uh, and then color it in Photoshop or some other program. Um, but a lot of guys will work digitally first, um, they'll do their layouts, and then they'll just go straight in these days because deadlines are so tight. Um, and I think, I think the new school guys, uh, are using a lot of 3D, a lot of ZBrush, like you guys do when you sculpt those amazing statues. Um, that'd be great to like start to incorporate into some work, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, let's rewind it a bit to when you first started. Okay. When was that decision made to get into that creative field? And was it just like a night and day thing or did you just kind of like slip into it? Uh, let's, well, it's, it's something like, I guess as a fan of comics and a fan of animation and things like that, you don't really think that that will happen, you know? So you're working your, you know, your regular job, your day job, then like earn money like anyone else. And when you get that call, it's like, it's a very surreal thing. Um, so yeah, you stay up late, you get that thing done and then hope that they give you another assignment. And it was a really gradual thing to become uh, like your job, you know, like, mm -hmm see what you do with this let's see what you do with that you know they're not just going to give you you know here's you know the whole year's run worth of spider-man you know your first go you know because it's all about learning uh relationships you know between you and the editor if you can hit a uh, deadline and things like that you know yeah well and you mentioned it when you get that call or when you first get that gig what was your first paid gig in this industry hmm First paid gig, wow. I know my first paid cover was definitely that Moon Knight cover. Um, as far as, uh, I think it was, I got a few pages. That's what it was. Um, I, I was they're doing, uh, what do you call it? Um, like character bios or, or histories and they were all encompassed in like one page. So you would tell like say the story of say Cable, which was, what I got to do and um, his whole history from his birth to like where he is now in the future war. And that was, you had to get it all on one page. And uh, yeah, I remember that being, being a lot of fun. Well, and you, you just mentioned Moon Knight. Um, can you embellish a little bit more on your love of Moonlight? Uh, that guy is something else. Like um, I just love the fact where they, they mix the whole uh, Egyptian God uh, mythology into like this guy who's who may or may not be talking to a god. Uh, he may be, uh, you know, supernatural, and he might just be like a guy having, you know, being down on his luck and just talking to himself. But he's out there fighting crime, and there's something complex about that character that I've always loved. Um, and he, he's just really cool looking, you know, like a guy who's gonna go out and fight crime in the middle of the night, and he's like wearing all white. It's just going to stand out just a little bit, but there's something really compelling about it. Well, and speaking of compelling, how do you keep your art fresh? I mean, I think that as artists, you're always trying to grow. How do you do that? I think for me, uh, I take a lot of classes and I go see and do a lot of things that I don't normally do in my everyday art. Um, so like I'll take a sculpting class, you know, whether I'm like pushing play or uh, learning like ZBrush um, because there's something creative about the headspace like you still want to like learn and grow but when you're drawing 2D all the time there's a tendency for your work to become kind of flat mm -hmm. and when you when you sculpt a form when you actually make that thing with your hand and you see you can feel how a muscle turns all the way around you can almost the next time you like draw that you, you know where that's supposed to go you know, you know how that's supposed to balance out that way. So I tend to take a break from my everyday and just go do something really random, like a like a sculpture class, stained glass class, you know, 
took a pizza cooking class the other day, you know, just so I can learn how to, and it's all creative, you know, it's all something random, but I make very good pizza, by the way. I mean, do tell, what is your favorite kind of pizza? These are important questions everyone needs to know. Well, there was a lot of wine involved because you can't make good pizza, apparently, <laughs> as far as my instructor told me, unless you have some wine. But uh, the marguerite was pretty, pretty amazing that I made, so it was pretty fun. Mm. Okay, and I do have a controversial question when it comes to pizza. Hmm. Pineapples on pizza, yay or nay? No. No? I, Me neither. No. no. I do not eat tropical flatbread. That's not pizza. That's not pizza. No. <laughs> tropical flatbread. I like that. No. I like that. No, that's not pizza. No. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um, what would you tell people that are starting to, you know, dip their toes into the water that is this field? I mean, you said taking classes. I mean, especially during a pandemic right now, I feel like a lot of us creative people are like, ah, what do we yeah. do? Oh, yeah, just, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I guess the biggest thing is to slow down because it's not a race. Um, that's, the, that's the one thing it took me so long to learn because so many other people you know, they were much younger than me and they hit really early and you're like, wow, am I never going to get there? Um, and it's like everyone has their own lane and everyone travels in that lane at their own speed. So just, just focus on you, just, just focus on you and you'll hit, you just will, you know? Um, yeah, that's the one thing. That's the one thing I've learned over, over the, <laughs> the few years. I've only been in the game for a little bit. Uh, no, I've been in it for a while, and it's all about your time will come. You will hit, and you will you will long for the days when you can sit in your coffee house and and dream about it because you'll be knee deep in it, and it's a hundred miles a minute. You know? I love that. That is so inspirational. Truly. Um, now this next question is a very serious one. Okay. What is your favorite color? <laughs> I don't know if you can see this background, <laughs> but orange. Mm -hmm. orange. Is my absolute favorite color. Um, I rarely get to use it, um, but yeah. And this is much more of a subdued orange. It's not. It looks brighter on screen, but it's much more of a a burnt sienna. You know, it's not super orange. Oh. I feel like parking cone orange, but you know, that's more red. But orange, definitely orange. I definitely. Yeah, I feel like people. People forget about orange sometimes. You know, I feel like red and blue get yeah. a lot of the hype. Yeah, yeah. So it's orange is a happier. Hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, orange is happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Dave, so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking with you. So much for having me. And thank you, everyone at home, for watching. Stay tuned for more from Sideshow Con. And don't forget, so let's your geek side show.